I'm David Toman, author of NootropicsExpert.com, and in this video, I'm going to share with you what I know about creatine, what it is, why we use it, the science behind it, the best form of creatine to use as a nootropic, dosage, and possible side effects. Creatine is one of the most effective cognitive enhancers available. Creatine is an amino acid that's synthesized in your kidneys, liver, and pancreas. It's produced from the amino acids methionine, glycine, and arginine. You can also get creatine from eating wild game, red meat, eggs, and fish, or from a supplement. Creatine is stored in your body as creatine phosphate, or phosphocreatine and is critical for fueling adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, in the mitochondria of your brain cells. And here's how it works. ATP is the primary energy molecule used in your cells as energy. ATP is your body's natural fuel source. ATP is broken down to produce biochemical energy throughout your body, including in your brain cells. During this biochemical process, ATP loses one of its phosphate molecules and is changed to adenosine diphosphate, or ADP. This is where creatine steps in. Now, remember, creatine is stored in your body as creatine phosphate. It recharges ADP by donating a phosphate molecule to ADP, which produces more ATP that can be used to make more energy. Without creatine to recharge ATP, your brain cells are literally starved for energy. Now there's many different kinds of creatine available on the market, so we're going to take a quick look at those. There's creatine monohydrate versus buffered creatine versus creatine ethyl ester. What's the difference? Well, it's easy to get confused between the many forms of creatine available, obviously, and, and how to know which one works best in your nootropic stack. Well, let's get past all the marketing hype and let's settle this right now. Creatine is one of the most well-researched supplements in the world, thanks in large part to the sports nutrition world. Creatine monohydrate is the form used in most of the clinical studies on creatine. It's the gold standard of creatine and has been proven for over decades of use. Buffered creatine is marketed as being able to outperform creatine monohydrate because of its higher pH level. But research doesn't back up this claim. Researchers at the Exercise and Sport Nutrition Laboratory at Texas A&M University conducted a double-blind study with 36 resistance-trained athletes. They tested creatine monohydrate, or creopure, against buffered creatine, or cre-alkaline, following manufacturer's directions for, for loading and maintenance phases, and they ran the trial for 28 days. Now, the research team concluded there was no evidence that supplementing with a buffered form of creatine resulted in fewer side effects, or that, buffered, or that the buffered form was more efficacious or safer than creatine monohydrate. And then we have creatine ethyl ester, which is another form of creatine that is supposed to convert back to usable creatine once in your body. It's marketed as having better absorption than creatine monohydrate. But the research shows it's actually less effective, because once in your body, it's converted to the inactive form called creatinine. The bottom line, it doesn't pay for fan using fancy forms of creatine, no matter how good the marketing hype. Creatine monohydrate is still the least expensive and most, the most effective form of creatine available today. Now, how does creatine work in your brain? Well, two ways in particular stand out. Creatine levels linked, are linked to optimal memory ability and retention. One study at the University of New, New Mexico investigated working memory ability, or the brain's ability to hold information for future use. Scientists studied children's brains aged 7 to 12 using magnetic resonance spectroscopy 
and measured various brain neurochemicals. The study found that children with the highest levels of creatine in their brain had a better working memory and concluded, we speculate that higher resting creatine levels may allow for greater in-task act activation and facilitate processing. In the second way, creatine directly impact, impacts mental fatigue. Another, another study published in neuroscience research examined the effects of supplemental creatine on mental fatigue. 24 healthy adults participated in this double-blind placebo-controlled study. In this study, the adults who took 8 grams of creatine daily for 5 days showed significantly less mental fatigue while performing more than those who took no creatine. The research team said that creatine appeared, appeared to help increase oxygen utilization in the brain. So study after study shows that creatine supplementation has a significant impact on working memory and intelligence, both tasks that require mental speed and processing. Creatine supplementation plays a major role in brain energy capacity and increasing brain performance. Now, you may find it curious that researchers who study cognition and athletic performance seem to favor using vegetarians and vegans and giving them creatine supplements. They use vegetarian subjects because creatine is only found in animal flesh and vegetarians don't eat meat. Creatine is not an essential amino acid because we, syn we can synthesize it from other amino acids. But amino, uh, amino acids found in plant food are not synthesized very efficiently. This is the reason why vegetarians have lower creatine levels in their bodies than guys like us and girls who eat meat. Our cells run on energy supplied by ADP, or ATP, and we burn en ATP energy when using our muscles. But we go through ATP faster when we use our brains. Consider that our brain only makes up 1-3% to of our body weight, but the billions of neurons in our brains use 20% of our body's total ATP-derived energy. ATP energy is used in your brain for neuronal repair and to produce, package, and secrete neurons. It's the power behind bioelectrical signals, and neurons communicate with each other. During this neuronal activity, ATP loses one of its phosphate molecules and is changed to ADP, creatine, and so creatine is needed to recharge ADP by donating a phosphate molecule. So you can use that ATP energy again. Now this is why every neurohacker should have creatine as part of their nootropic stack. So how does creatine feel when you take it as a supplement? Well, once you start supplementing with creatine, you should experience improved cognitive, cognitive function, thinking will be clearer and faster, mental energy will get a boost, and you won't feel mentally wasted after an intense mental, work, mental workout. Reading should be easier, and you won't find yourself rereading that last sentence or paragraph. Overall, you should feel a boost in both physical and cognitive abilities, an improvement in our sense of well-being. You'll feel better. Now, as I said before, there's a ton of research backing up using creatine, both for overall health and as, as a nootropic for brain function. To see studies on how creatine boosts working memory and intelligence, and creatine increases IQ and attention span, and creatine repairs brain cells. Just go to Nootropics Expert and search for creatine and I've got links in a description of all the studies there. Now the recommended dosage for creatine for nootropic benefit is 5 grams a day. Studies show that creatine should be consumed with carbohydrates for uh, best absorption. The myth that you should not take creatine with caffeine is exactly that, a myth. No reliable study has shown this to be true. As for side effects, Creatine is produced naturally in your body, so it's considered well-tolerated and safe. But overconsumption of creatine can be hard on your kidneys and liver. These organs are creatine factories, and too much creatine can overwork them. 
If you're dealing with liver or kidney problems, talk to your doctor before supplementing with creatine. Pure creatine is safest, but many commercially available creatine supplements contain contaminants. So check the labels carefully. Review the manufacturer's website and any other material that they offer that attests to their quality standards. Now, other side effects can include mild diarrhea, gas, upset stomach or stomach cramps, muscle cramps, increased urination, uh, headaches, uh, reduced appetite, and water weight gain, usually when using too much creatine, or during the loading phase of creatine, creatine supplementation. Because creatine causes an energy boost in many neurohackers, avoid dosing in the evening, or you might find difficulty getting to sleep. Uh, now, for the forms available, the best dietary source of creatine is found in wild game. Other sources include red meat and, and certain fish. The most common and least expensive form of creatine available as a supplement is in powder form. It's also available in capsules and as a liquid. I recommend uh, skipping the creatine nitrates, ethyl esters, malate, HCLs, and others, and stick with the creatine monohydrate powder form. So my nootropics expert recommendation is for creatine, five grams a day. So that's my report on creatine. If you want to see links to the studies I talked about, go to nootropicsexpert.com and search for creatine, or click on the link below this video. There you'll see a full transcript on, a web, on the website of this video, and you'll find dozens of articles on all the well-known nootropics on Nootropics Expert. If you have any questions or want to share your experience using creatine, Go to my article on Nootropics Expert and leave it in the comments section at the bottom of the article. If you want to see more videos on all the popular nootropics used today, subscribe to this channel before you leave. I'll be putting up new videos on nootropics and optimizing your brain every week. I'm David Toman, author of Nootropics Expert.